had time to calm down. Uh, I, it doesn't bother me. I've moved on. The most important thing was a great fight, and I got into boxing to show my talent, which I did. Do you think if Triple G fights Canelo a third time, he'll get stopped? No. Yeah. 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 It's hard to say because every fight is its own separate fight. Sergey, you have bad memories being back in New York, being so close to the making your dream a reality. Absolutely not. New York is my second home. I love New York. My team is here. My family is here. So I love being in New York. It's a real champ. Before <laughs> anybody hears anything else, one of the nicest men walking the planet. One of the best fighters walking the planet. He should be middleweight champ of the world. They seem to always want to give him the short end of the stick. But this is the goddamn technician. Remember, I told you that. The one, the only, soon to be middleweight champ of the world. We know it in our hearts that he is. They're going to know it by the strap. So, my so, dude right so, here. So, so, this is my baby right here. I'm out. <laughs> so, so, so I, so I got to ask, um, you know, obviously tonight there's another middleweight champion here, Jamal Charlo. Um, are, are you eyeing Jamal Charlo? This is what Jamal Charlo. I'm definitely watching them, but I've always watched them because they're in my division. And uh, Charlo, you make a tough fighter. So, how tough is it sometimes when you're this tactical boxer, everything you do is perfect, your jab, the defense, you now know that a lot of these fights you will have to win by knockout, but judges will give it to somebody else because it's a bigger name. Does that change your mentality now? Do you, are you willing to be more risky knowing that you have to get, if you face Canelo, if you face a, a Triple G again, or even a, an Andre, a, a Demetrius Andre, you have to win by knockout. You probably won't get a judge's decision. Uh, no, I'm actually going to continue fighting the same way and train the same way, but I might have to hit harder. How tough is it being in your, in your shoes where a lot of American fighters, they can win, do whatever they want, we don't have to worry about having this country behind them. I know with a lot of Ukrainian fighters, a lot of Russian fighters, it's you fight for the motherland, you fight for the, you know, for the people, you fight because they look at you as the LeBron James, the, you know, Peyton Manning. How tough is that having to not just be great inside the ring, but outside the ring, knowing you have all these people who are looking at you going, he is our hero. We do this because of him. We, these next generation boxers are going, we want to be the next Sergei. <laughs> I also fight for myself and my family. Uh, I fight for my fans. Uh, I do fight for my country, but I also fight for for America as well. I have a lot of fans in America, and, and I've been treated well in America. Is there any thoughts of maybe going into 160? I know a lot of fighters probably don't want to fight you, so because of the fact that you've shown great performance in fights, and many people thought you won those fights, you should be a champion. Uh, maybe a Callum Smith, you know, or anyone else up in 160, or you focus at 160. Um, I haven't.
thought about it. Uh, I don't. I haven't watched those fighters and studied them. But if there's a good offer, I can get to 168. You know, David Benavides is someone that's on the PPC side. You know, if that's something that if you can, would that interest you? There's just a lot of business we take care of 160s. Look at Golovkin, look at Carlo, Eubank, Canelo. I have a lot of unfinished business here. If I, if I could fight all of them, then there's a reason to go to 168. But for now, I still have a lot of business here. Going back to Triple G, like, was he what you expected? Or were you surprised either? If anything was either harder or easier, get a boat, so we do what he's doing. Oh, we got a problem, man. We don't actually everything that, that I thought he was. What we planned for is actually the Golovkin that we got. <laughs> what do you think about Kino? Do you think he's done as a middleweight? I got a lot of good talent at the six feet, so there's enough to lure him back into the six feet. What would it take to kind of get a Triple G fight? Or, you know, I know that you were in a mandatory position. Um, you know, Kip County spoke very highly of what Al Heyman was able to do in the negotiations. We have to get kind of back in a mandatory position again to kind of like get those fights on that side of the street. <laughs> I think I've already proven to the world that I'm a top boxer. I've proven that I'm at the top of the division. At this point, it's really my team and their team has to come together and make a deal, and then we can fight. Sergey, so what makes you love this sport? It's it's a brutal sport. You get hurt a lot. You have to sacrifice family. You have to sacrifice parties, drinking, eating. Uh, Every day sucks ass and swallows. There's politics, all this. What makes you love this sport? Like, what is it about this sport that you look and go, I can't quit it? It is in my DNA. <laughs> You know, I love the feeling when you actually come out in the ring, that feeling of adrenaline, the emotion I get when I step in the ring and I, I'm actually in the midst of doing my thing. Uh, I've had this feeling since I was a little kid. I can't even imagine not doing this anymore. Do you ever get, I only mean the word starship, but do you ever have those moments when, as you said, fighting Triple G in Madison Square Garden or fighting on TV and having people say, you know, when ESPN or Fox, knowing that millions of people from Ukraine to the United States to Europe, do you ever have those moments where you have that little kid of, I didn't see this coming, I didn't think it was going to be this big, I, you know, this is like, this is sort of like a fairy tale where you get to be, do what you like to do, get paid for it, and have millions of people watching. Do you ever have those sort of geek out moments? <laughs>
when I'm actually in a fight, I don't think about it at all. But right now is the moment where I can look back and think, wow, I fought, I fought on TV. All these people came to see me. All these people came to see my fight. They all know who I am. So it's the moments after the fight that I reflect and I feel it. In the fight, when I'm in the process, I'm only focused on the fight. So right now I'm actually very anxious to get back in the ring and show what I can do and I, like right now it's all about anxiety to get back and fight. No, uh, I just wanted to ask, um, there was a fight today and I wanted to get your, your uh, overall perspective being a boxer. The Anthony Joshua Ruiz rematch, um, did you get to see it? And what were your thoughts? I, I watched it. Uh, Joshua put on a great boxing performance, very smart, intelligent boxing, and he made very few mistakes. Did it matter that, regardless of maybe Ruiz came in a little bit heavier, some people were saying that was his reason why he lost, maybe he didn't take it serious? Did that matter? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't think it's because of the weight. It's just it was, Joshua made fewer mistakes. Joshua didn't allow him to fight his style. You think Joshua could beat the likes of Deontay Wilder or Tyson Fury or Usyk? Uh, he's the champion of the world, uh, so it's possible he can win, but it's just so hard to say because it, one punch in the heavyweight division could change the fight, but I think all those fights would be very good fights. Do you think Usyk's style, you know, you know, being able to move and similar like you, do you think Joshua can handle a style like yours, similar like Usyk? Usyk can meet, uh, uh, I think we stick a lot of boxing. <laughs> Last question for me. How do you keep the hunger? I mean, you've been paid. You have now money in the bank. Kids are taking care of them, guessing. Your wife is happy. We've seen fighters get, you know, silk sheets ruin a fighter. How do you keep that hunger, that drive when... You're far away from when you first started this sport. You don't have enough money where you're probably retired to do other things. What makes you keep that hunger, that drive to do every morning, get up, do road work, sparring, get the butterflies and go, all right, I'm going to do this again and again and again to my next fight? I'm still motivated by fighting big names. I, I made money, but I didn't achieve what I wanted to achieve, which is to win the, the, the championship. So I still have a lot to do. I want to. I want the big fights, but I also want the wins. Anything else? And uh, the, the real motivation is uh, my wife took all the money and she's giving me an allowance. <laughs>